Today, we're going to be talking about a serious issue that's been making waves on the continent. So, imagine this. A college decides to slap Niger with some heavy sanctions after a coup rocked the country in July 2023. But here's the kicker. Did they ever stop to think about the consequences? Did they ever stop to think about the thousands of Nigerians who could suffer because of these sanctions? Some may argue that Ikawa's belief that these sanctions would put pressure on the military government to hand over power to the ousted president, Mohamed Bazou. But guess what? Things didn't go as planned. Instead of buckling under pressure, Niger's military government grew stronger. And what's worse? The people of Niger ended up suffering greatly. Economic hardship took its toll, and thousands died as a result. Where's the solidarity? Where is the African unity we always talk about? How could a regional bloc that was supposed to support its members make a decision that resulted in not only economic hardship, but also the loss of innocent lives? It's time to reflect, ask tough questions, and make changes. Let us stand together, support one another, and envision a future in which decisions are made with compassion and understanding. That is the type of world we want to live in. To be honest, this should not be surprising because, as Ibrahim Tror stated in a recent interview, Ikoas has deviated from the ideals of its founding fathers and is now a puppet for foreign countries. The regional bloc is now made up of weak African presidents led by a weak puppetry chairman, President Bola Tinubu, who only cares about taking actions to show that Iko is not weak. But what he doesn't realize is that Iko's actions under his leadership have exposed how puppetry and incompetent the regional bloc currently is. This is why Captain Ibrahim Tror has come out to issue a stern warning directly to Nigerian President Bola Tinubu, reprimanding him for how his actions have had terrible repercussions for the people of Niger, as Sai Marcus Hervé, a journalist, revealed this via tweet. Captain Tror delivered scathing remarks against President Nubu during an address to thousands of citizens' vigil committee. Captain Tror stated that ECO, led by President Nubu, was responsible for the deaths of thousands of Nigerians as a result of the sanctions imposed on Niger, citing a lack of electricity and medicine in hospitals. Recall that one of the sanctions imposed on Niger was the cessation of electricity supply from Nigeria and the closure of its borders. However, according to President Traor, the sanctions have not diminished the Nigerian people's fighting spirit. The president went on to emphasize Niger's military strength, emphasizing its history of combat and resilience, and asserted that the Nigerian army is battle-hardened rather than just for show or peacekeeping purposes. In his own words, do you believe there are weak men in Niger? There are fighters over there. The Nigerian army is warlike. They've been fighting for years. It's not a military parade or a peacekeeping army. President Traor went on to say that the alliance of the Sahel State's armies are united and ready to face the ECOA's forces that were supposed to be on standby. We're waiting for that standby force, Ikawas. Thousands of Nigerians died in hospital beds due to a lack of electricity or medication. It's a crime. They are accountable for these sanctions. They are accountable for these deaths, Troer stated. Still speaking on the subject, Troer chastised Ikawas for its ineffective response to the people's suffering, accusing them of disregarding international laws and breaking agreements. He emphasized the negative effects of sanctions, particularly on Mali and Niger, citing the manipulation of energy supplies as a means of inciting conflict. The passage mentioned the closure of seaports to landlocked countries, which is against international law. Regardless, neither the international community nor ECOAs have responded. Troar went on to condemn African leaders' actions, comparing them to useless and incompetent politicians who failed to prioritize their citizens' well-being. He specifically targeted Ivory Coast's president, Alassane Ouattara, for cutting off electricity to Mali in 2022, resulting in higher costs for Ivorian citizens. President Troar, on the other hand, noted that ECOWA's suspension of electricity in Mali only served to increase public trust in the country's new junta government. In his own words, they attempted to make Mali suffer, including ignoring all attempts to supply Mali with electricity in the hopes that the population would revolt. It's not working. When it lasted, some were forced to make their own people pay by raising the price of electricity. It will rise again, implying that we no longer require them, 
as we are developing solar panels for solar energy, and all AES will soon have nuclear plants. Chor criticized African leaders' lack of concern for their people's well-being, citing the conflict between Russia and Ukraine as an example. He held Ikawa's and its affiliates accountable for the sanctions and the resulting loss of life in Niger. According to Ibrahim Tror, despite the ongoing conflict between Russia and Ukraine, Vladimir Putin has not cut off their energy supply. However, in the case of President Tinubu, his actions regarding the situation demonstrated that he did not care about the welfare of his people, who have also been affected by the sanctions imposed on Niger, particularly Nigerians near the Niger border. In a direct message to President Tinubu, President Tror concluded, their blood is on your hands, referring to the thousands of Nigerians who had died in hospitals. Captain Tror's speech highlights Ikawa's irresponsible actions, while also revealing the strength and resilience of the military governments in Mali, Niger, and Burkina Faso. So, rather than turning the people against the military junta, Ikawa's actions have only turned Africans against them and increased support for the military government. From his speech, it is clear why Mali, Niger, and Burkina Faso had to withdraw from the bloc. What is the point of remaining a member of the bloc when the bloc's actions have had disastrous consequences? And now that Mali, Burkina Faso, and Niger have decided to leave the cause, Ikoas is discussing dialogue and lifting sanctions. Didn't President Tinubu realize that dialogue was an option when he threatened military intervention in Niger? It's obvious that he did all of this to gain Western approval, and it just goes to show that Ikawa's is all talk and no action. To be honest, President Tinubu's removal as chairman is the best thing that could happen to the bloc, because his actions since becoming chairman have dragged the bloc into disarray. It is unlikely that Mali, Niger, and Burkina Faso will return to Ikawa's, regardless of the bloc's decision, because these three countries intend to focus on building the AES, a confederation formed by Mali, Niger, and Burkina Faso, and establishing its governance free of Western influence, as evidenced by their plans to develop solar energy and nuclear plants to reduce reliance on Ikawa's controlled resources. Following the announcement of their exit from the bloc, the military governments of Mali, Niger, and Burkina Faso confirmed their plans to form a confederation, as stated by the Malian government spokesperson, Abdul Omega, our excellent diplomats, then recommended to the heads of state the formation of a confederation, bringing Burkina Faso together. China, Mali, and Niger are awaiting the formation of a federation of three countries. It was part of a speech delivered by an army colonel at a meeting of ministers from the three states in Ouagadougou, Burkina Faso. Mr. Maga reiterated the accusations against ECOAS in his speech, claiming that it has evolved from an organization intended to strengthen the social fabric between populations into an instrument used by some leaders to pit populations against one another. He also stated that ECOAS, an organization whose mission is to support government's efforts to stabilize states, has found no other unfortunate inspiration than to threaten to militarily attack a sovereign state whose people have simply decided to take control of their own destiny. MAGA went on to say that the current economic situation is a perfect example of what the AES will never be, and that it will continue to be an alliance of states united by a common goal of African emancipation. This new era will see the alliance of our state's strength and further assert itself as a force in the service of peace, security, development, and integration of our peoples for the benefit of our nations, he added. Once the AES is fully established and operational, it is certain that it will grow to become a threat to the cause bloc, and other African countries will want to be a part of this. Seriously, the military juntas of Mali, Niger, and Burkina Faso have completely transformed the political landscape. They have demonstrated that they are the type of leaders Africa requires, strong leaders capable of making sound decisions that benefit the entire country. With leaders like them in power, Africa demonstrates its ability to govern itself. Africa is rising, and leaders like Ibrahim Tror require all African support. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like and a sub so more people can see our content. See you in the next one.